Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, and happy Independence Day, Nigeria. I hope you can hear me very clearly. It's no longer an argument. Oil is not the future of Nigeria. We face a future that is more knowledge-based and certainly lower carbon. Knowledge-based industries, almost all technology-driven, will be the biggest drivers of GDP in the future. And natural resources will continue to take a backseat. Globally, work is being redefined. Even in developed countries, about 30 to 40% of their workers will need to significantly reskill into new occupations by 2030. Digitization, remote working, automation, AI, machine learning, cryptocurrencies. These are facts of the future. And all of this complicates our most pressing challenges of high unemployment and low revenue generation. But see, there's one segment of our population that is already building this future. They are undeterred by all these challenges, and that is the Nigerian technology founder. Technology founders in Africa are building the future of the continent, one startup at a time. And they are leveraging a more sustainable resource that Nigeria has in abundance, and that's talent. And that's something that we need to dwell on and discuss and keep discussing as a solution for this future. These startups are barely a decade old, but they are tackling the hardest problems facing our continent with inspiring results, despite very harsh operating environments and nascent regulation that is still trying to understand this digital economy that is coming up. And their work cuts across industries. We look at biotech. You know, the mapping of the entire human genome has a big gap. And there is a technology startup led by a Nigerian that is building a data set of African genetic information. This holds profound impact, not just for Africans, but the entire humanity. We look at startups that are driving economic and financial inclusion for a population that is one of the most excluded in the world. We look at logistics, startups that are driving, connecting drivers and fleet operators to manufacturers that are bringing goods in and out of the country and even across the region. We look at fintech, there's a lot of talk around fintech. There's a lot of fintech startups that are digitizing payments. And what that means is that I can be here in Abuja and buy any good and service anywhere in the world. Or there can be somebody in Ibadan that can sell any good and service into the world. And see, when you digitize cross-border payments, what you then do is connect Africa to global commerce. You broaden the range of value of what we can export. Nigerian founders are digitizing to level the playing field, slowly shifting us from consumption to value creation. And all of this work that they are doing, it creates high quality jobs and they are equipping a new generation to compete globally. You know, luck alone does not define their success. There are broadly three things that these Nigerian founders understand very well and they've been able to build on top of that foundation. The first is this knowledge-based economy that we keep talking about, and that transition. That is going to be the driver of value. This generation understands the power of technology to improve humanity. The second thing is that they, uh, they have the ability to compete effectively for capital to scale high-growth businesses. And thirdly, they understand the high global demand for technology talent. Again, something that we need to dwell on, focus on as a solution. This global talent is something that we need to focus on. Specifically, we need to agree on how we improve the supply of this talent and ensure that there are more founders out there creating this future that we're all going to live in. Talent and digital skills 
are a key pillar of the transition to a knowledge economy. So let's look at some of the evidence out there. I mean, what evidence supports the impact that these founders are making? You know, there's questions around if there is real impact that they're making in the midst of all the exposure that they're getting. And the answer is yes. In the first half of 2021 alone, if you just look at the funding that has been raised, in the first half of 2021 alone, African technology startups have raised over a billion dollars in venture capital. And Nigeria continues to be a top three de destination for that capital. We look at some of these startups, and if you look at the customers that they're serving, it's a very strong proxy for the value that they're creating. We look at a startup like Helium Health, digitizing electronic medical records. Today, they serve about 300 healthcare providers and 5,000 health professionals. And this crosses both public and private healthcare institutions. Paga is a fintech, serving 17 million customers with a distribution network of over 27,000 agents across the country. Kuda is, is a digital bank. They've doubled their customer base since Q1, serving about 1.5 million Nigerians, providing them digital banking services. Flutterwave serves about 300,000 merchants and opens them up to 150 different currencies. They are touching users in 33 African countries. Massive, massive scale. In the last two years, Team Apt has built a retail distribution network of about 70,000 agents serving 15 million customers in Nigeria. There's entire swaths of this country where the only providers of financial services are these startups, barely a decade old. Young Nigerians setting these things up. You know, it's also interesting when you consider the geographic reach of these startups. You know, a digital native generation is undeterred by borders. These founders are not content with just solving problems in Nigeria alone. What they're doing is deliberately exposing their solutions in other African markets where they don't even have a local content advantage. And what that means is that they have to produce the best to win. And they're competing effectively and doing it very well. And what that does is sets up that DNA of continuous innovation and continuous upskilling. What are some, let's look at some of the tailwinds that has been in their favor. You know, what are some of the advantages that they know that we have in this country, they understand it very well, and they've built on top of that. One is that Nigeria is in sync with the global demand for technology talent. The pandemic accelerated digitization across every human interaction. Now, practically, what does that mean? It means that more software has to be developed. And today, you still need humans to design and to develop that software. There's another thing that they understand very well. And the pandemic also showed us that, that working remotely at scale is possible. Hiring is not limited to proximity. And so when there's huge demand that you're looking for, the world becomes a place where you can choose from. And remote working was always common, it was always well known within the technology industry, something that you know, this, this, um, that industry understands very well. But then there's also a question that, okay, we're looking for this technology talent, we desperately need them. How did the world know that Nigeria was a place to look for as a strong supply of this talent? Again, the Nigerian technology founder has shown the world what is possible. You know, there's a, there's a number of these founders that have specifically focused on building talent accelerators, proving to the world that Nigerian talent is good, very good. Good enough to build incredible software and good enough to take an idea, find the capital for it, and scale into massive outcomes. And they've all been driven by the firm belief that talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. They have shown 
that even with just six months of focused training, you can produce a Nigerian developer with skills that you can immediately export. Again, we talk about job creation, we talk about FDI, all of these things that we need. One of the most popular of these accelerators is a company called Landela. You know, Landela started in Nigeria. It's an initial cohort, I remember. Six young developers. There was one lady among them, I remember her. And they were working out of a small office in Ikoyi, serving clients in the U.S. And today, Andela is a billion-dollar business. It has a network of engineers in 80 countries. They started in Ikoyi and they moved to Yabara and then you know, expanded from there. Decagon is another one of these accelerators. They run a six-month software engineering program. And today, they have trained about 440 young Nigerians. They've had a 100% job placement rate. Some of these jobs with foreign companies. These young people have increased their salaries about four times since this upskilling. I mean, I should be quoting myself. So. Um, you know, another important accomplishment is that these Nigerian startups, they have attracted a lot of foreign venture capital. This is FDI, and what they are looking for is yield. They are solely looking for attractive yields for their capital, and they have discovered the Nigerian technology ecosystem as a place where they can find that yield. So then let's start to go towards the solutions, because what we have established is that we have an abundant resource in global demand that can attract this much-needed FDI. What is the right strategy to accelerate this job creation at a time when the economy is not producing nearly enough? You know, and one of your strategy, of course, is to improve the type pipeline of technology talent. This raw talent exists in abundance. Decagon has had more than 400,000 applicants for their program, and Della even much more since inception. You know, there's a recent um, IFC study, and they estimated that in Nigeria, there are about 85,000 software developers. Young people, the median age is about 34. Well, you know, there's an interesting statistic in that report. 77% of them have had informal training. And what that means is that they've had to figure it out. They are mostly self-taught. They've gone online, they've taken courses, boot camps. Some of them they've learned on the job. And so when you now put these things together, and again, we're talking about solutions, we're talking about low hanging fruit, we're talking about strategy. Our strategy has to address two things. Number one, how do we create much more? Because there's a ton more than the 85,000. And number two is how do we lower the barrier to this upskilling? It should not be so much of a hustle for these young people to get these skills and start to export them. You know, I was looking at the 2019 NUC report, and it starts to provide some clues. In that report, it said at the time, there's about 170 universities. I think by now there should be a bit more. And the enrollment capacity is only about 2 million. Not nearly enough. Another challenge we need to look at, but we can park that for now. If you focus on that portion of the enrollment that are enrolled in tech-related courses, there's about 128,000 of them. Look at the new admits. That particular year, there were 74,000 in the tech-related courses. But you know, the interesting thing is the outputs, those that were graduating from these tech-related courses. There was about 9,420. And so what that means is that there's about 10,000 of these graduates that are coming out from these tech-related programs, but they still don't have the skills we can immediately export. Because remember, that 85,000 will still graduate, still try to hustle and get some of these skills. And so this is one area that we can immediately start to create solutions around. And so when you put all of this together, right, what do you see in Nigeria's future? There is high global demand for technology talent and digital enabled businesses. Nigeria has an abundance of this talent, the strong affinity for technology. 
We need to work on this deliberate, non-predatory policy so that we can sustainably increase the volume and the quality of this talent. The jobs will come and we would export this talent for value. So Nigeria, what do you see? Thank you. Center Sheraton Hotel Apartment.